Hi, and welcome back to the Emmy Awards. Um, so this episode's going to be about... Um, hi, my name's Emmy. For any, anybody who hasn't seen one of these before, and this is my podcast, I talk about anything that I want. This is really just something I'm doing right now because I don't have much of a life. Um... I mean, okay, I do have a life and I'm trying to be productive, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to defend myself, okay? Post-grad life is going kind of depressing. You can watch my last episode if you want to hear more about my life update. So anyways, um, I went to Kenyon College and I did an episode about like my time there, but it ended up being more like chronologically me talking about that time in my life and less about like my least favorite and my favorite things and it wasn't as like informative as I wanted it to be because I kind of felt like I needed (laughs) to explain my whole experience there to get a whole like background on the relationship I have with the institution um now you don't necessarily need to watch that before you watch this if you're watching this because you're interested in going to Kenyan or you got in like any of those things, um, if you're a prospective student, this episode will be a lot more informative. I'm going to talk about my least favorite things, my favorite things, um, the whole thing. I'm going to be brutally honest about my experience at Kenyon um, in less of a chronological, like, this is what happened every year that I was there kind of thing. Um, obviously, this is my experience and my opinions based on my experience at the college. Every Kenyan student will have a different experience and a different perspective on the institution based on what they experienced there. This is solely mine. Um, but you know, um, I did, I did work for the office of admissions my senior year at Kenyon. So I feel like I do know like a good amount about Kenyon and I feel very confident speaking on it. Um, I mean, the office of admissions hired me to like talk about it, not just like just me, but I did info sessions. So like, I know about Kenyon and I know my perspective and what a lot of students like to hear about it or want to know about the whole thing. Um, I have some notes, but mostly I'm just going to go off the cuff. This is going to be brutally honest, um, like I've said. Um, Before I get started, please make sure to like and subscribe, turn on your bell notifications, all of that. Um, It helps me out a lot. If you went to Kenyan, help out a fellow alum, please. Um, or if you're just interested, I'm going to link all of my social media below and all of that, which I always link. Um, but yeah, let me just get started. So, write it down. okay, so I wanted to go to Kenyon because I wanted a small school. Now, a lot of people like something I got asked a lot by people is like, why would you go to school in Ohio? You know, specifically, like, a phrase that was used a lot of the time is the middle of nowhere, Ohio, which is just somebody's way of saying, why would you go to a school in a rural area? Like, that doesn't appeal to me. Now, I think that the location, I'm sure, like, is a challenge for some people. For me, it was never a challenge. Beyond, like, I would say the... the, most challenging thing for me when it came to the location was the mental health resources in the area. Um, I think my, my biggest issue with Kenyon is that I feel like, and this is simply my opinion, um, that the mental health resources are sorely lacking. And and here's the big like issue is the college is always like, on paper, we have a good like health and counseling center. And I'm sure that's true. Like on paper compared to other colleges, even compared to colleges of the same size, like the ratio is really good. I'll give them that. Like the ratio is good. Plus, you know, it's all included. You don't have to pay. Like there are a lot of positives to the counseling center, but the biggest problem is that if you don't have a good relationship with any of the counselors or none of them are the right fit for you or none of them can give you the proper treatment you need if you have a mental health issue. Seeking treatment outside of the college is extremely challenging because of the location. Like, not, like, colleges don't have, like, the best mental health resources in general. Um, And mental health and mental illness specifically is a new conversation and 
like not new conversation, but I feel like it's become more of a topical conversation and people are talking about it more and talking about how it's an accessibility issue at the end of the day. Like all of that can be true. But (laughs) the big but in my opinion is that it's really hard to, like if you go to school near a big city, if you don't, the counseling center doesn't work for you, you can go to like Chicago or go to New York or like there's more access if you're living in less of a rural area. And even like the closest city to Kenyon is Columbus, Ohio. And even like, and it's an hour away by car. Um, I don't know why I said by car, but it's an hour drive. Um, So if you don't have a car, like that's a whole thing as well. So like, it's, it's just very complicated because you could like in theory get treatment somewhere that's like 30 minutes away but as somebody who's done a lot of extensive research like a lot of the, it's like rural Ohio and it's conservative Ohio and like that's fine but sometimes it's hard to get treatment that is like fitting for you as either a person of color like some sort of minority like it can just be hard I remember looking at counselors, like find my, find the therapist.com and a lot of them would be like religious or stuff like that. And it's just like, I don't know if I would personally feel safe in those kind of spaces. I also am the kind of person who I'm at a point in my mental health treatment where I don't particularly gravitate towards talk therapy. Um, I'm very good at pinpointing why things upset me and then like all of that, like talk therapy was, sorry, I'm going on a tangent, but this is important for me to say. Talk therapy was really good for me in high school because I used to just feel things and get triggered by things and not understand the root of those issues. Um, And now when I get triggered, I understand a lot of like where that comes from. Like I'm able to understand my emotions now. So talk therapy for me is no longer that useful. I, I need structured like skills-based therapy and that's just not really something you get in the area unless you go to Columbus, which I ended up doing. So that is a big issue when it comes to the location. Beyond that, I think a lot of people think like, oh, there's nothing to do on campus. I wholeheartedly disagree. Like of all the issues I've had at Kenyon, and I have plenty, <laughs> like being bored has never been one of them because I think something that people maybe don't think about when they're looking at the location is like, well, there's not like a ton going on around the area, but it's a four-year residential college. So you pour your life like into building things at Kenyon. Like Kenyon students, like there's always something to do and it's like 99% of it is student run. Um, because there isn't like, you don't go into like the city for entertainment. You have to find it within yourself and you always live like around the same people. So you like build a very strong community. So definitely like if you're interested in going to Kenyon and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get bored. Like truly, I've never met anybody who's like, Kenyon is a boring place. Of all the complaints I've heard, that's never been one of them. And the thing that's really wonderful about Kenyon is like, if you feel like there is a gap in something, you can try to create it. Like. There's a lot of freedom to be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, So location is always a big thing that people used to ask me about. And I do think um, if you're a minority, going to school in rural Ohio can have its challenges. Um, I'm from Venezuela, but most of the time people ask me where I'm from, I'd say Maryland. Like sometimes you just don't want to cause conflict. With COVID, like a lot of people didn't wear masks. Like, you know, there's some tension, but you just, you learn to deal with it and at least for me, it was mostly fine. I'm also a fairly white passing um, Latinx person. So like, you know, I my experience is not the same as a black person or any other person, okay? I'm only speaking on my experience, but I managed just fine. When there were moments of racism, like I have to say, no place is perfect. My freshman year, there was like a big incident with a racist play and it was really upsetting to me, but It was actually like a big moment for me when I realized that a lot of other people were upset too and people who like weren't necessarily offended because I kind of, my gut reaction was like, nobody's going to care. Like this hurts me, but nobody around me is going to care. And a lot of people cared. And it was very nice for me personally. Not the racist play, but the fact that I felt like a lot of people were like allied 
like, you know, to, to be mad about the racist play with me. I'm just kind of used to, or I was used to, like, if something, like, being too sensitive and, like, if something hurt my feelings or I found something offensive, I would very often be told, like, Emmy, you're too sensitive, like, it's not a big deal. So when, like, a lot of people were united in that this was a big deal, it was very validating to me, and I had never experienced that in, like, my high school or anything. Um, so... And if you've watched my podcast episode about my high school experience, like I went to a pretty um, bad high school. Okay, it was a fine high school. Like it's an okay high school. My experience there was horrible. I went back the other day um, for like a performance. It was it was weird. It was weird going back. Not the performance. The performance was fine, but it was very weird going back. So that th- those are my thoughts on the location. Another reason I really wanted to go to a small school was the community. And as I've touched on, I think because it's a four-year residential school and because there's so much momentum and like pouring your energy into like projects and things on campus, like it builds such a strong community because you're relying on people all the time. And there's such a like unified ex- like experience by like there's one dining hall. Like everybody will eat in the same place for the most part for like all four years. Like you will live in similar dorm rooms as other people. Like it's really beautiful in the sense that like you don't have like an off-campus apartment where you're like living off campus. And then like most of the people you interact with, if they're around your age, are going to be from Kenyan. So it's just, it's like a very unifying experience and community and I love that about Kenya and I love that I could walk around and feel seen. I know that's not for everybody. Like some people just want to go to college, keep their head down, like be a face in the crowd. For the most part of Kenya, like it's very hard to be a face in the crowd. It just is. Um, I'm sure you can do it, but I don't know anybody who does. And I feel like Kenya attracts the kind of person who doesn't want to just be a face in the crowd and wants to like be a part of something, whatever like path that takes. Um, and I think that's really great. And I love that about my Kenyan experience. And I think something that I kind of took with me was that I kind of have the ability to, to start things. Like, obviously the world (laughs) is a very complicated place and like you need money and, and resources and access to like build things. Right. But there are certain things like starting this podcast that like before I went to Kenya, I don't feel like I would have felt like I had the ability to do. But now I'm like, I wanted to start a podcast. I found a cheap microphone. I filmed these on my phone and I like edit them on like the free software I have on my like laptop. Like, and I feel like I can just do things that I want to do and just start them. And I, I just, I feel like I have agency now in a way that I feel like I didn't before college. And maybe part of it is that I grew up and I like, had to cook for myself and I had to do my own laundry and I learned to be independent in that sense. But Kenyon really gave me a confidence and a sense of like, I can, I can take care of things and I can handle things. Um, and I can just, I can figure it out. Um, I think also part of that went hand in hand with my worst experiences, probably of my life being a Kenyan. Um, I think I made it through when I graduated and um, like despite everything, I graduated and I made it through and I left feeling very happy and content. And um, it was hard for me to leave because I was ready to be done with college, but I was also really sad because it took me so long to feel at home and to feel comfortable and safe and secure at Kenyon. And It really only happened there for like the last like two years that I was there. And maybe that's like most of it. But I I was at Kenyon for like four and a half years, technically. Um, I graduated in December. Um, So I was there for nine semesters. I never took a semester off. I explained that in my other one, but um, my other episode. But it was really only like the semester after like 2020 onward, like those four semesters because it was spring 2020 fall 2020 spring spring 2020 (laughs) fall 2020 spring 2021 and then fall 2021 those four semesters were the best semesters I had at Kenyon um 
And it's really like when things like came, like started getting better for me and spring 2020 was when I was finally on a, like accommodation. Um, so if you know about my experience, Kenyon, it's very complicated and I have a very complicated relationship with the institution. Um, they tried to kick me out. It's a whole story. Like, they didn't try to kick me out in the sense that I did something wrong. I was, like, almost forced on mandated leave because of mental health issues. And it ended up just making me feel worse. Like, it was a horrible experience. Um, and, yeah, I, like, I had a mental health crisis. I left campus for a little bit. I really wanted to come back. I was able to come back. Um didn't really get much help. They were like, talk to somebody in the counseling center and like go to your therapy in Columbus. Um, and that was it. Like, I wasn't told that I could have accommodations, like nothing like, like I, I really had to like eventually advocate enough for myself to get myself the accommodation I needed. Um, and it took a while. It, it took like a few semesters of me doing poorly academically because I couldn't handle the course load until I was finally like able to take a reduced course load. Um, I'm sure not everybody's had that experience with like accessibility, but that's just my experience. Let me see what else did I write down? Oh, something I <laughs> that I, I like about Kenyon. Um, you get asked a lot if you work for admissions, like what's the like educational or like academic like experience? Like, is it a competitive environment? Is it a collaborative environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now I went to a very competitive high school, like so much so that they, I knew people who would be like, oh no, I did horribly. And then they got a B and you're like, shut up. Like it was genuinely horrible. And I constantly felt like I wasn't doing like enough, even though I was doing the most that I could. And, um, and in retrospect, compared to how much I struggled academically at Kenyon, I'm like, Emmy, you were such a like fool. Like you were doing like phenomenally. Like I wish I had my grades from high school, like at Kenyon. Um, that was not the case for me. And and it's funny too, because I like everybody told me like college will be so hard academically, college will be so hard academically, yada, yada, yada. Now I do think college was hard academically, but for me, college was hard academically because I was doing so poorly mentally. Like when I was doing better mentally and I had accommodations for my illness, like it was challenging. I learned a lot, but it wasn't like impossible in the way that I went into college thinking it was going to be. My first semester, actually, even though I was going through a mental health crisis and I was gone for like a couple weeks, <laughs> Um, and then I came back and then it was like, I was doing therapy nine hours a week when I came back. Like, even despite that, like I did well that semester, like academically, academics weren't my problem at Kenyon, at least at the get go. Um, when I started doing really poorly mentally as like a result of everything that happened in my first semester, my second semester is when I started like dropping my grade, like my grades started dropping because I was just repressing everything that I'd been, that I was going through. Um, and I felt like everything that happened my first semester was my fault. And I felt it was just bad. I was also taking an 810 every day of the week. Don't do that. Unless you're a morning person. I'm not. Anyways, what's my train of thought? Oh, Kenyon is not a competitive environment. Now, I don't know. Maybe this is just my, again, this is just my experience. It wasn't competitive at all. Um, it was... Even when I was doing really poorly and I feel bad about myself, like I never had people be like, what did you get on this? Or like, how are you doing? Like people are very much willing to like build you up if you're like doing well and like be proud of you and celebrate your accomplishments. Um, my sorority like used to do this thing called Smarty of the Week and they would be like, oh, this person got a role in a play or this person passed their comps. And it was like very nice. Um, and you would get celebrated for accomplishments like that, but it was never like, you're stupid because you're doing poorly. I actually like, even though I was doing really badly <laughs> for a while there and I was getting like genuinely not good grades, at least for me, per like they weren't, it was a very big decline from my high school. Even though I was doing really badly, like I never had anybody tell me I was stupid. Like everybody at Kenyon who I interacted with like built me up. Even the people, like the people who didn't like me just ignored me. And 
then all the like everybody else I interacted with was like Emmy you can like do better like we believe in you um you're smart like it was it was a very nice uplifting community and I always say I said it in my op-ed that I linked in the last Kenyan episode I did that if I hadn't been like if the community hadn't been so supportive I do think I would have transferred um just because my first semester was very traumatic. And I do have to say, um, it was very hard. It was very hard being on campus around the anniversary of things. Um, And yeah, it it was just hard to constantly be around things. I had, I used to have a panic attack, um, like passing my freshman year dorm. I went in I went into it like like inside the building for the first time my junior year was spring of 2020 and um I just sat in my parked car after like sobbing then I wrote a monologue about it um I like changed it to be like my old house and I didn't actually get to I didn't see my room because the when I lived in Gun, the the hallways didn't have like k-card readers which is like your id card like if you got into the building you could get into like any hallway but they installed k-card readers so i couldn't get into the hallway um so i got into the like lounge but i couldn't go into the hallway i actually funny story had a class there spring of 2021 um in gun like the lounge because it was like a covid it was the first like everybody's on campus semester well everybody except the freshmen I think yeah everybody except the freshmen was on or no yeah everybody except the freshmen were on campus in the spring um of 2021 and like they needed more space in classrooms or whatever so I I had a class in gun lounge which gun livers called it the gunder dome so it was just weird um it was, a, it was weird having a class there, but all that to say, I overcame my um, aversion to Gund. <laughs> I still wouldn't, like, want to go in there, and if I ever walked into, like, my r- dorm room for my first year, I think I'd probably cry, but, um, yeah. Oh my god, fun little tangent. <laughs> when I was moving in, somebody... Um, who like one of the like orientation leaders or something I don't know one of those people who like check you into your dorm who are like students um she was like oh my god I she was like I lived in gun 103 when I was a a first year and then my dad was like good vibes and she said yes it was the worst year of my life no hate to her though she has no control over that um I do remember who it is. I'm not going to say her name though. But anyways, um, like I, that, like that girl and I are, are paths crossed again. Like I know her name. So there's some people I met and I'm like, I don't remember their name because they meant nothing to me. Not that we were like friends, but like I follow her on Instagram. That's what I mean by this. I think she follows me back. Hi, if you're watching this and you know who you are. So I touch on the fact that Kenyan does not have good mental health resources. Now, I'm going to go on a little rant, or maybe not, but I, like, okay, I've, like, alluded to things, but I, I don't want to, like, dive into it because I feel like it can be triggering, um, and I also feel like I am better writing about it than I am talking about it, um, and yeah. But basically, my freshman year, I, I'm going to keep things very vague because I just it, it's unnecessary. But if you want to know the details, my articles will be linked down below. So I like they tried like I was almost forced out, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and um, then the spring of my sophomore year, um, not sophomore year, the spring of my freshman year, Um, so after all of this had happened to me, right, like I had been wronged by the college, um, or at least I believe I was wronged by the college. If you don't think I was wronged by the college, okay, good for you. Um, although I do have to say after I published my op-ed, somebody was like, did you get an apology? And I was like, from who? (laughs) 
And they were like, the administration, like the people who did this to you. I was like, no, they're never going to talk to me again. Like, I think if they emailed me, like, I, like, the, like the people I spoke to, like at that meeting where they tried to force me out of Kenyan, I think if they emailed me, I would like have a panic attack. I'd be like, I never said that. Kenyan College is my friend. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but anyways, so the spring of my freshman year, Kenyan got rid of this thing called the peer counselors. Now, the peer counselors had been a while, had been around for a while since about 2015, 2013. I think 2013. They'd been around for a while, is my point. Like, they were a very established resource, like, and Kenyon, out of the blue, after they hired a new, um, Kenyon hired, like, there, there used to be this guy who was in charge of the health and counseling center, or maybe just the counseling center. Anyways, he retired, and they hired a new guy to run the health and counseling center, and after he came, and I'm not saying it was solely his decision, okay? I'm just talking about the, 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 timeline of the event okay i also i wrote an article about this for the collegian magazine like the history of mental health care and like the trajectory of it and i don't know if it'll be published by the time this podcast goes out i'm literally designing the magazine right now but if they publish it before this comes out i'll link it down below okay and if you want to read it like follow me on twitter and i will tweet it like as soon as it's like live for the world to read because it's like like, my op-ed was angry, but this, this is, like, I go off. And there's, like, research that I did. Like, it's not just my experience. It's, like, backed up by, like, proof that this has been a problem. Like, Kenyon's, like, lack of mental health resources for, like, years. Like, it's not just this thing that, like, I personally had a bad experience. So this is, like, my cross to bear. This is, like an issue people have been talking about since like the 80s anyways that article is coming soon um like there are literally articles from the collegian which is kenyan's newspaper from like the 90s of people being like why doesn't kenyan get a better mental health resource like get better mental health resources anyways i just i can talk about this forever because it's just really frustrating and and you look at all the changes that kenyan has made in like all these years and the counseling center has mostly stayed the same. Like since its inception, it's been pretty much the same, like the same number of counselors. They've gotten more counselors. There was one point in history where there was like one counselor. Um, like, you know, some changes here and there, but overall, like it's really, it's, it's not gotten that much better. I lost, I lost my train of thought because I was in a blind rage. <laughs> But so anyways, um, there, there was this thing called the peer counselors because something I really love about Kenyon is that students are very much willing to pick up the slack where the university like lacks. And um, that, in my opinion, is what the peer counselors were. Um, they were like this confidential resource where students could talk about anything. And it was really a overwhelmingly positive experience for peer counselors and students who were not peer counselors alike like it was it was generally it was very like positively viewed um there were articles on like Kenyon's website about how great the peer counselors were they won awards um it was a very like successful program and after the new director of health and counseling came in at Kenyon they undermined the peer counselors by removing their confidentiality and removing the 24-hour hotline um which basically just like systematically like undermined and um like got rid of the peer counselors as they existed now when this happened um this new health and counseling i don't want to say his name because i don't want him to like fight me but um, you know who you are and I don't like you. <laughs> I can say this. I got my diploma. They can't do anything to me anymore. But anyways, so he in the newspaper like was like, 
the PR counselors are functioning too much as a clinical resource, like their students, it's too much weight for them to do. So they, they basically, they got rid of the peer counselors, uh, to pro like to lighten their load or whatever, like they were doing too much. And they did fundamentally nothing, not even fundamentally, they did absolutely nothing to replace the resource they took away, which was one of the most accessible and least threatening resources, because at the end of the day, you're just talking to another Kenyan student. Like there were posters with their photos all over like the campus. So you could be like, oh, that person is like, in a club I'm in, or I've seen that person around. Like they were people you knew. So it was less threatening and less intimidating. And I I like, I called a, the, a peer counselor like one time and like, it was, it was an, like, I'll never forget. Like he was a twin. Like we, we bonded over all of these things. And he made me feel like Kenyon was a place I could like fit in and find a home for the first time, like that entire semester. And so when Kenyon got rid of the peer counselors, I remember feeling very upset and very hurt because I was like, Kenyon just do it doesn't care about like the mentally ill. And a big talking point was like, not talking point, but a big thing that the, the peer counselors were like is that they thought the college was more focused on like liability than they were like, actually helping students. And that really hit home for me because at the end of the day, I feel like that's why I was asked to leave and why they, like the college saw me as a liability and instead of trying to help make the college a better, like more accessible space for me, which was possible. And as soon as like that happened, I was like, and I got like treatment outside of the college as well. Cause like having therapy outside of the college and a clinical like treatment, like outside of <laughs> what Kenyon could offer me because it doesn't have the resources that I needed personally for my illness. Um, as soon as I had access to that and like accommodations with the school, I did really well at Kenyon, like I did. Instead of like trying to figure that out with me, their solution was like to try to kick me out. And initially when I had my incident, they wanted me to leave. And I was like, I don't want to leave. My parents live in Brazil. I, I want to go to Kenya and like, I'm having a hard time feeling like I'm part of the community. I don't want to leave and then have to come back. And all the people I already know be like in completely different places than me. Like, I just, I feel like that's going to make things worse for me. And my doctors were like, we don't think leaving is going to help you. Like, Nobody I spoke to was like, you should leave, except Kenyon. So anyways, um, and then I like had another crisis and not to the same degree, but I, I like, I left a party crying and my friends called Campus Safety because the college had told them that if they were worried about me at all, that they should call Campus Safety. Um, and they did. And Campus Safety like sat with me. I, I like, they confirmed that I was in a danger to myself and they left me alone. And then the next day, um, the next night, I got a knock on my door and I had to walk to the, um, and Dean was there and he walked me to the counseling center where my mother was because they had called her and asked her to drive seven hours to um, move me out of Kenyon. And I just, I think that's absurd. <laughs> I think that's absolutely horrendous that they did that to me. And if you disagree, okay, good for you. I think I was wronged by the institution. So after I experienced this, I was wronged. I felt like I didn't deserve to be a Kenyan or I'd done something wrong, despite my only like offense being that I was in pain and dealing with trauma. The college gets rid of a resource and everybody's like, they're doing this because of liability. And it just, it really, it hurt. It really hurt me. Um, but I couldn't verbalize it yet because I didn't realize that, like, I, I didn't want to talk about what had happened to me yet. Um, part of the reason is because I was told that I couldn't tell other students if I was struggling with, like, thoughts of harming myself in any capacity because it wasn't up to other students to, like, do that for me. And I understand that impulse, but it was just, it made things worse for me because I felt like I couldn't talk about anything. 
and I didn't think I could talk about what I, I had gone through my first semester at all. So I was just silently angry about them getting rid of the peer counselors, and I kind of kept it pushing. But um, things got worse, I guess, at Kenyon in terms of mental health. There was a big crisis with a bunch of counselors leaving at some point. I believe it was my sophomore year. And then junior year, like, spring, they did a thing called Send Silence Packing. I think I touched on some of this. But anyways, my point was that I was wronged by the institution. And then instead of seeing them maybe improve, they just, like, seemed to get worse. So it was very frustrating for me. And um, I really think that one of the biggest issues with Kenyon... It's part of the reason I'm wearing my Save the Farm shirt, which is from Case Walk, um, which is Kenyon's like students or Kenyon Student Workers Organizing Committee. Um, basically, Ken, Kenyan student workers are trying to form a union, and the college is trying to stop it. I think one of the best things about Kenyon is that students care so much about making the place better, and I think one of the most frustrating things as a student is that ultimately, like, a lot of the times, you're just powerless. And you can do everything you can, and you, like, we can unite and, like, try to make things better. But if the college, like, takes away resources and, like, undermines programs that students built so, like, put so much energy into building and, like, are, like, overwhelmingly positive, like, at the end of the day, it's just, like, you feel powerless, and I find myself getting really frustrated as an alum, like, watching everything as it happens, because it's, like, so many of the decisions just, like, don't help students. They end up undermining students and making it a worse place to exist. Getting rid of peer counselors and the continual lack of importance, at least seemingly to me personally, of bettering the mental health resources like it just it makes Kenyan it makes Kenyan a more difficult place to be and I think I've said before that I get asked or I, I was asked this once and I think about it a lot if there was anything Kenyan could have done to make my experience there better I think and I've said that I think more than anything I wish they had just treated me kinder when um like after everything happened I think that was ultimately what made it worse um but I do think and this is like why I really like telling this to students going in if you have some kind of accessibility um like need um like if you have a disability or you have like an illness like whether it's mental mental or physical or whatever I, you should go in with some sort of plan, treatment, ask for what you need to figure out what the college can offer you and what you might need to get elsewhere. Because I went into Kenya, having done therapy for most of my high school career, thinking that I was going to be fine. I was like, Kenyan has a counseling center. I'll make an appointment, like a standing appointment, and I'll be fine. You can't make standing appointments at the counseling center. Um, and... None of the counselors, like, had the skills that I needed. I had been going to CBT. Like, none of them knew how to do CBT. At the time, now the counseling center is completely different. Like, I'm, I'm talking about my first year at Kenyon. It's a completely different staff. But the staff at the time, none of them felt like a fit for me. Um, and... It was so hard to make an appointment that when I saw one counselor and I didn't really like click with her, I didn't want to have to switch to another counselor because then I was like, I don't know when this counselor is going to be available and like you can't be guaranteed the same time. So it was just very confusing. And for somebody who is str for somebody who was struggling, it was very challenging at the time to try to have like I needed stability and I needed a certain time every week and I wasn't able to have that. Um, now I think even if I had that, I, I don't, I, I don't like to think about like what I could have done differently because it happened the way it happened and yada, yada, yada. But I, I do think I could have gone, <laughs> I say, and then I'm going to say what I should have done anyway. I, I think I should have gone into Kenyan a little bit more prepared about what I needed. I think 
I was always the kind of person who kind of un, like underestimated um, how much like I was depressed or whatever. Um, like I knew I had depression, but I, I don't think I was able to verbalize um, that I had unresolved trauma until I experienced trauma as an adult and was able to be like, that was traumatic. And oh, that like, this is what trauma feels like. I felt this before, if that makes absolutely any sense. I know I said this was going to be more informative and I've just been talking about myself, but like, I guess that's what this podcast is anyway. But anyways, what was my point? Oh, I, I, I underestimated my needs and um, it bit me in the ass, but I do think more than anything, Kenyan could have treated me with more kindness after. Like when I say Kenyan, I mean the administration, the community that surrounded me did treat me with a lot of kindness. And it's why I ultimately view the school more positively than negatively. But sometimes they make it hard. Like with the decision to um, end the residential program at the farm. Like that when that was announced, like I, I'd already graduated and, I just remember like seeing red, like I was so pissed off because at the end of the day, I think, again, it just goes back to like, you're not consulting the students who are like the ones who like are the heart of this program. Like it just, anyways, I, other people can talk about the farm much more eloquently because I never volunteered at the farm or anything, but I think it's just another symptom of the greater issue, which is Kenya needs to give its students more of a voice and more of a role in decision making that affects them specifically. I really think my biggest like request and urge to Kenyan College would be to prioritize their health and counseling center before they prioritize building new dorms or any of that. Because they're tearing down dorms that are perfectly fine to build new dorms to fill more spaces because Kenyon ultimately wants to become bigger. Like they're gonna like let more students in, like they're hoping to increase the like student population. This isn't like, this is like, everybody knows this. Um, they let in like more students in for the class of 2025. The freshmen <laughs> for this school year, like the freshmen, I think it's 20, yeah, 2025. They, yes, 2025. Like, that class is, like, really big. <laughs> like, they over-enrolled. And this was, like, a plan for them to eventually move closer to 2,000 students. But they did it too quickly because too many people said yes or whatever. Um, but anyways, so they're building more dorms, et cetera, et cetera. And I think all of that, while it's lovely, I think... There was a lot of construction during my time at Kenyon. I was there for four and a half years. Not None of it was like for the health and counseling center. And I have to say like it goes beyond like mental health. Like it, it goes for physical health too. Like I'll never forget one time I was a sophomore and I was walking down Middle Path, which is like the central artery of campus. Um, that's what people call it. And I feel like it sounds kind of gross, but it's just the center path anyways. So... <laughs> And this kid was like bleeding, like not profusely, but he was bleeding. He probably needed like a bandage or maybe like, so he needed some kind of medical attention. He comes up to me and he goes, what year are you? And I'm like, I'm a sophomore. And he goes, where's the health center? And I was like over there, but it's like 5 p.m. on Friday, like it's closed. And I just don't think it makes sense for it to close on Fridays or for the weekends. Like why is it closed for the weekends? Things like that. I just, I think they should prioritize the health center. And it's also just like when you look at research and you look back at old newspapers, like ranging from like the 80s, like, and then like, like every decade since, like, and almost every few years, there's some article where they're talking about the health and counseling center and somebody like, people are like overwhelmingly underfunded and understaffed and like, it, like, I can't think of the word, but, like, not good enough. What, like, and they're, like, wh where's the growth? Where's the improvement? Where's the change? And you would think, like, a global pandemic and, like, 
mental health being more of a topic, like, would improve it, but it didn't. So I don't know. That's just, those are my, my thoughts. I do think also Kenyan should um, pay its student workers better. I'm very much pro casewalk. I signed my union card back when I worked for Kenyan. Um, yeah. So, and it's just like, it goes back to what I was saying about like the Ken, like the administration's decisions. It's like they hired a union vesting lawyer and they're paying him all this money. And it's like, you're paying all that money to just undermine like the well-being of your students, specifically students who are from a, like low economic status who need like the money to get through school, like work study students, all of that. Like you are undermining those students and paying all this money, which comes directly from the tuition that we as students are paying you. To, you're, you're using our tuition to pay a lawyer to work to undermine us instead of just paying student workers better. And it just, it goes back to like, like I know colleges are a business at the end of the day. Like I know that, okay? I'm not naive. Like I get it, okay? Yada, yada, yada. But it just, it's infuriating. It's infuriating, especially at a college that like, is so branded on like community and like, you know, caring about students and like, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying I don't think that's necessarily true. I, I do think that that's true to some extent, especially from your fellow students and your professors and all of that. Like, I, I, I definitely felt that kind of love and care from the community. I'm not saying, I'm not like shitting on that at all. But I do think that it's just ridiculous when the college itself, like the institution, makes choices to undermine students when like the whole appeal of Kenyan... <laughs> is the students and like all the effort they've put in to make Kenyan what it is. And I think the whole peer counselors thing like exemplifies that because it's like, who were they hurting? Like absolutely nobody. They were just making Kenyan a better place, but because they seem like a liability um, in some capacity to the business operations of the, of the college, like, they had to go or whatever. And it's just infuriating. It's it's infuriating personally to me. Um, I also, like as somebody who went through a mental health crisis and was treated like a liability, for that to happen like the semester immediately after that, like it did feel kind of personal. <laughs> like I'm not saying that the decision was solely based off of me. I, like, I'm not saying they were like Emmy Cardinale. We need to get rid of the peer counselors because you're a liability. But it kind of felt that way. Like, you know, there's no such thing as coincidence. But anyways, um, so those are my rants, my raves about Kenyon College. I do have to say, I loved living in a small town. Like, I, I'm a big Gilmore Girls fan. I was always like, I want to live in a small town. And it really appealed to me that, like, you, you would know people at Kenyon and people would know you. And I really felt that way. Um, like the people at the coffee shop knew my order, like the post office ladies, like I was besties with them. They like knew me because my cat had a litter subscription and it came in the mail and they'd be like, your litter's here. And I was like, love you guys. Um, when I gave my post office key back, like my PO box key back, um, I was like, I graduated yesterday and they were like, oh, we'll miss you. It was just nice. Like they were my besties. I loved them. But what was my point? Like, there were a lot of really positives, and I left Kenyon feeling very sad to go. And I think it's a community that will stay with me forever. I, I love Kenyon. I genuinely do. As much as I make jokes about it, like, two things can be true at once. I, I experienced trauma there. I was wronged by the institution, and the way they handled an already traumatic time for me made things worse, and ultimately led to me struggling there for so many years because I felt like I didn't deserve to be there. When you're a person of color, you already, or at least I did, feel some sense of imposter syndrome when you get into this all, like not all white space, but majority, like prom uh, predominantly white institution. Like you feel 
some level of like, I'm not smart enough to be here. Like I didn't, I felt that way in high school because everybody was really competitive. But at the end of the day, like high school is just like your district. This college, I chose the college and I didn't feel smart enough to be there because I'm a woman of color. It's a predominantly white institution. And I felt very out of place. <sighs> not always, just at the beginning. And then on top of that, I'm going through a mental health crisis and then the college is basically like, leave, like you, you can't be here, you shouldn't be here, you're a disruption to the other students. Um, direct quote, I'm not making that up. They, they told me that I was starting to become a disruption. Um, like that really gets in your head, at least if you're me and you're sensitive. Like I internalized that and I for years did not feel like I deserved to be at Kenyon. I was good enough to be at Kenyon. I constantly felt like I shouldn't be at Kenyon. The amount of times I'd be like, I feel like Kenyon was right to try to kick me out. Like and now in retrospect, I'm like, that's absurd. Like that's absurd. Nobody deserves to be treated that way. And I did and I hadn't done anything wrong, but I don't remember how I started this. <laughs> Um, oh, two, two things can be true at once. I was wrong by the institution and the way they handled it made it worse and made my time there really challenging for a long time. And it was a really beautiful experience and I loved it and I loved the people I met and it was life changing in the most amazing way. And I'm not, I don't regret going to Kenyon. Um, it was, it was the best, I think, place I could have gone to college. Um, it impacted me very deeply, and I think my Kenyan education will be, be with me for a very long time. And I didn't touch on academics enough, and I'm coming up to an hour because I went on rants and tangents, but um, I loved that Kenyan was very writing heavy. I was an English major, so <laughs> like, you know, there's some implication that you like writing there, um, but I liked that I learned how to write in a variety of different, like in a variety of different disciplines. Um, I had to write papers for math. I had to write papers for um, drama. Well, drama, like I had to write scenes and stuff. And then I, I did write a few papers and stuff like that when I took acting classes and I had to do character analysis and all of that. But I wrote a lot for every single like class I took. And I really loved that I, I got to learn how to write like all different kinds of papers, like poli sci papers I got to write a little of like scenes and like plays and stuff like that um I got to write about plays I got to like I just I got to write about so many different things and I grew so much as a writer and a communicator there because of that and the focus on learning to communicate like even writing for math was like really interesting and fun um and I'm not that good at math <laughs> but um like, I, I loved that part of my education. My professors were some of the best people I've ever met. Um, yeah, I, I had some really, really incredible professors. I had some less than perfect professors too, but like, comes with the territory. Um, but overall, like my professors, I had like, maybe a couple, like not ideal professors. And even those professors, I know people who like them. I think it really depends on like, sometimes the student. Um, and the subject, but I had like, even math, I'm not good at math. Like I had some incredibly patient math professors. I would go into their office hours and be like, and other people would like be getting A's and I'd like barely pass the, the tests. And I'd be the only one who was that lost, or at least I felt like I was the only one who was that lost. But, um, yeah, I had some really, really wonderful professors. I, I loved the community. I loved the people I met. I loved working for the newspaper. Um, it was a really great experience. I, I joined um, my junior year. I, I like auditioned for a play on a whim and I got like in and I got a part. And then after that, I was involved with like the theater scene at Kenyon, like not as in depth as like some people are, but I like dabbled in the theater. Um, side of Kenyon and it was it was really lovely like I was so scared when I got a part because I was like oh my god this plays a big deal and all these people are gonna be mad at me that I got a part and everybody was so welcoming and like encouraging and very kind to me so much so that I felt very comfortable like auditioning for things after I was on the board of a playwriting organization for a little bit um and then I took four drama four drama classes I took intro drama and then I took acting. 
um, with my king, <laughs> Benjamin Vicelio. Love him. Um, <laughs> he was my acting professor. I literally, like, I loved him. And then I took my last semester at Kenyon, I took lighting design and I took character analysis with Ben Vicelio. I honestly, I signed on to do character analysis because he taught it. Like it was one of the most like fulfilling classes I took at Kenyon, like whole, like genuinely. But I initially only took it because I wanted to have him as a professor for my last semester at Kenyon. Um, but it was a really great class. I was the only non-drama major in that class, or at least at the time, because this one kid dropped the drama major. <laughs> um, but er, like initially I was like one of the only people who hadn't taken that many drama classes and I was just there for fun. And it was it was a really like amazing experience. I loved that class. Um, it was very chaotic at times. Like people were absent a lot because of COVID and other reasons. And then um, partners dropped out. Like it was a complicated, complicated semester, but it was a really um, fulfilling class. And then lighting design was actually so fun too. The performance I went to at my like old high school um, I was focused on the lights the entire time. I was like, oh, Fresnels. I was like, ooh, that, those are gobos. Like, I, I know things now. Like, not that much. But, um, I do still have vector works on my computer. Um, <laughs> but like, like, you know, I, I learned stuff. It was really fun. I learned how to, like, I hung lights. I did the whole thing. I, I wrote cues. All of that. It was really fun. Um, and it was just really great. Somebody asked me if I was a drama minor, not just one person. I actually got asked that question a lot. And I said, no, there's no drama minor <laughs> because there isn't, there's not a drama minor in Kenya. One time I was talking to somebody and I was like, I get asked if I'm a drama minor a lot. And this other girl was like, there's no drama minor. And I was like, yeah, I know. She was like a sophomore. Okay. I was like a super senior. Like I'd been there for a while and I worked for admissions. Like Sit down. I know that there is not a drama minor. Um, I would have tried to get it if I, if it was possible. But I, I liked just having my English major. A lot of people are like double majors and like triple minors and like all this crazy stuff at Kenyon. And I was an English major. And that was already challenging, <laughs> like trying to get the one major. But um, let me see what else I liked about Kenyan academically. Oh, I really like, and I know this is not for everybody, but I really loved the liberal arts experience because I felt like I always had the freedom to take classes that I was interested in. Um, I also, I only had one major, but I know plenty of people who had double majors who like still had room in their schedule because a lot of things at Kenyan are inter interdisciplinary. You are able to like, like you get a lot of things out of the way. Um, like requirements like to graduate you get a lot of those out of the way like pretty quickly I had all of my requirements except my second um social sciences class I had all of that done by my junior year like I was vibing um now I did want to be a math major for like a year so that really helped me because I was like done with my natural sciences and my QR which is quantitative reasoning it's a requirement at Kenyon um it basically means you need to take some class where you do some kind of math, I'd like for a lot of it or most of it. Um, but it's not like you don't have to take a calculus class. I took calculus one and calculus two because I wanted to be a math major. I also took stats and calc three, but I ended up dropping both of those classes. So those don't count. But I was really into the math thing for a second, if you can't tell. So that was a whole thing. Um, but... I always had the freedom, I mean, my last semester, which is why people ask me if I was a drama major because I was just taking drama classes <laughs> um, for fun. My lighting design professor was like, I mean, have you d done your comps yet? And I was like, <laughs> or no, she asked me if I had done my drama comps yet. And I was like, I'm not a drama major, Rebecca. She was like, really? <laughs> so um, comps or like your senior capstone, it's the same thing. Just, you don't go to Kenyon, you're like, what are comps? But let me see. Kenyon, oh, and by the way, when I said the second class thing, you have to take two classes in the same discipline. So you have, like, there are four areas. Humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, and the arts, the fine arts. Kenyon takes the fine arts out of the humanities, okay? So you have to take a fine art um, 
But like within the fine art, for example, if you take one drama class to fulfill the fine art requirement, you take you need to take a second drama class. So you get like not just an intro, but like you take a 200th level as well. So that way you get more of a like, you don't just get like a little bit, you, you by the time you finish, you know a little bit. Like I, I feel like I know a little bit about like drama and reading things like, like, you know, I know like, I forgot the words now, but I swear I knew them. Oh, like objectives and like, you know, stuff like that. Like inciting moment. If you're a drama major, maybe you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, like stuff like that. Like I learned about lights, how to hang them, all of that. Like, um, like you learn more than just like the introductory stuff, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so for my natural sciences, I, I took two calculus classes and that got me humanities. I didn't have to worry about because I was an English major. So like that was a piece of cake. You know, you have to take so many English classes that that knocks it out. And then um, social sciences, I took, originally I took a, so, I took a sociology class and then I took a poli sci class. So then going into my junior year, my, or maybe going into second semester of junior year, because I, I took my sociology class. I can't remember now, but anyways, it was like, it got to this point where there was the only requirement left. And my advisor was like, you can either take another poli sci class or another sociology class. And I didn't want to take another poli sci class. I took one and it was enough for me. And I took it because it was about Latin America. And I was like, Ooh, fun. We'll get to talk about Venezuela. We only talked about Venezuela for one week, <laughs> It was fine because I actually learned a lot about um, Latin American politics outside of Venezuela, which was nice. Um, and that was a really, like, meaningful class for me because I got to, like, explore something that was so, like, deeply personal and imp impactful to my life, which is, like, the political situation in Venezuela because it shaped my entire life because I moved to the United States because of everything that was happening. Um, and, you know, like, I got to talk about that and learn about that from, like, an academic lens and like we had discussions about it and it was very interesting, it was a very nice class, but I didn't want to take another poli sci class, um, especially cause that was like a special topic, like 400 level like seminar. So I would have had to take like intro poli sci anyways. So I took another sociology class, which I didn't love the sociology classes I took at Kenyon, but I think it was because of the professors. Um, and then fine arts, I took, I mean, I did a lot of drama classes I took intro drama my first, like it was my senior year, but I had three semesters for my senior year. I explained it in my other podcast, but I had, um, for my first semester of my senior year, I took intro drama and I had dinner with my drama professor and she was like, Are, is this your like fine art requirement? <laughs> and I was like, no, I did that like sophomore year. Um, because I did, I took, um, digital imaging and then I took digital photography and that knocked out my fine credit fine art credit and it was really fun digital imaging I actually got to use InDesign for the first time in like a couple years and I was like I forgot how much I love this so anyways I'm at an hour um I think I touched on everything I wanted to touch on got in a little rant about my experience at Kenyon which I, I didn't do totally last time um I think it's because I'm like I've revisited my article that I wrote for the magazine um, because I'm designing it right now. Um, so, and yes, I graduated and I'm designing a magazine for college. Okay. What can I say? They don't know anybody at that school who knows InDesign. <laughs> I'm kidding. But if you're watching this and you are looking for somebody to design something, please hit me up. I'm serious. Although my InDesign free trial expires in seven days. Cause I got locked out of the Kenyan account that I was using for free. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't using... <laughs> I wasn't using it for free. Like I wasn't using it, but I had access to an account via the newspaper because I was the design editor for the newspaper, right? I logged in because I'm designing the magazine and um, or I, I started designing the magazine and I was fine. And then a few, like two days into designing it, it asks me to log back in to my Adobe account. And I try to log into the newspaper's Adobe account and they changed the password. So I got locked out and I had to, Get a <laughs> seven day free trial. So I need to finish designing the magazine by Saturday. But anyways, that's besides the point. What was my point? Oh, um, I can't design anything because I don't have InDesign. 
unless it's in the next seven days. But that doesn't really matter. Plus, this will be out on Thursday, so it'll be too late by then. Still, hire me to design something. I'll figure it out. I'll do it on Canva. I'll ask my parents to pay for in design. All I want to do is design stuff, please. Anyways, what was my point of all of this? Oh, I got kind of angrier than I did in my last one because I was, I've was i been revisiting my magazine article, which hopefully I'll be able to link below. Um, if not, my op-ed will be linked below. My social media will be linked below so you can follow me um, for when that comes out. It's going to be really like, I kind of pop off, okay? Please, please read it. It's like my magnum opus or something. I don't know if that's a reference. But anyways, um... The Emmy Award for Dumbest College Administration goes to Kenyon College. Um, get your shit together, genuinely. Like, I I love this school um, so much. Like, so much. Like, if my kids wanted to go to, like... Like, I would never live in this area and send my kids to my high school. But if my kid wanted to go to Kenyon, I wouldn't be against it. Um, unless my kid was mentally ill and Kenyon ha hasn't fixed its resources by then if I have a kid I don't know if I'm gonna have a kid but I'm just saying if I had a hypothetical kid if my cat Ivy could go to college I mean she did I guess with me anyways what am I saying oh yeah Kenyon um the administration needs to get its shit together um if you're a current current student you, uh, you should revive the peer counselors just call them something different <laughs> the sexual misconduct advisors the same thing happened to them and they rebranded as um SERPA so I think somebody should do that with the peer counselors. Um, yeah. What was my point? I don't, I never have one. Anyways, if you're interested in going to Kenyon and I didn't answer a question you have about the college or the experience and you're like, this girl was just ranting about her own life instead of, um, you know, answering my question, um, please comment down below or message me privately. Like I do check my Instagram requests. Um, Mostly because I hate having outstanding things and I delete anything that I'm like, I don't want to know or this is bothering me. So um, you can send me a personal message on any of my social media and I will respond. And um, like genuinely, I love answering questions about Kenyon. Um, yeah. So please ask me anything if I can be of use. If you went to Kenyon and <laughs> you disagree you can call me an idiot in the comments. I don't really care. You can be like, Kenyon was right to try to kick you out. That's your opinion. That's why we live in a free country or something. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, please make sure to like and subscribe. Share this with somebody you know who's interested in going to Kenyon, who um, would agree with me, would disagree with me. Um, or if you just think I'm pretty and you want people to look at my face, that'd be nice too. I don't really care. Um... Follow me on everything down below. Um, thank you. Next episode, no idea what it's going to be about. Life goes on, you know? Like, whatever I want to talk about. This one just felt topical because I'm kind of, like, revisiting Kenyan stuff by designing this magazine. Um, but once that magazine's out and my article's out, like, that's my last... Um, thread connecting me to Kenya in my last semester there so it's kind of emotional and weird but I wanted to talk a little bit more about like specific things I liked and didn't like about Kenya and things that bothered me about the school and things that I love about the school um because I feel like I didn't do that in my last one um but this was four years of my life like I have so much more to say um but I'm not going to talk about Kenya at least for a little bit um I will probably keep writing about Kenyon and all of that, but I guess my biggest takeaway is I'm really grateful for the experience, even the bad parts, because getting through all of that and being on the other side of it and being able to acknowledge like that I was wronged was very like healing. Um, and I, I do think that there are moments obviously that I could have handled better, but I think at the end of the day, the institution failed me. And I still managed to get a lot out of it. I got a diploma. I got a lot of strength and a lot of friends and family and a home because Gambier really, Gambier was really a home for me. And I, I miss it. I miss my routine in Ohio. Um, but yeah, it was, it was overwhelmingly, um, I don't know, positive, but it was overwhelmingly like, 
it was a net positive in the sense that I'm, I'm grateful for everything that happened, even the bad stuff. But I think part of loving something and caring so deeply about something is that I love Kenyan and that means that I want it to be better. Just in the way that people, like, just in the same way that people protest things in this country because they want circumstances to be better for everybody or, like, for the people who are suffering. Um, that's why I complain about Kenyan, and that's why I was so passionate about being open about things I experienced, at least after I realized that I was able, like, that I could. Um, and that's why I'm going to keep talking about it, even though I'm an alum. Like, I think Kenyan can do better, and they should do better. And I will keep talking about it until hopefully there's change. I very much want my experiences to, like I share my trauma and I talk about it because I hope that it'll make some change. Whether it's just one person feels seen and understood, um, that's, that's what matters. But if it sparks like institutional change at the college, I think that that would really be phenomenal. And I think it's long, long overdue.